Good afternoon. I hope you all are doing well. Um, today's video is completely by accident. I did not plan on doing this video today, but I uh, came up with something kind of interesting yesterday. I received a mold in from one of the custom mold makers, and uh, it's a partial mold. What they do is they, they send it partially cut, and it then it's up to me to complete it out. I uh, drill it or cross pin it or however I'm going to do it to create uh, the pins for the hollow point, that sort of thing. For instance, <clears throat> I'll start with a chunk of steel, just like that, put it on the uh, lathe over here, and then uh, pretty much use my imagination and decide what I want to create. Uh, for instance, one of the pins I planned on using was this for just kind of a simple hollow point, uh, so the bullet would have been significantly smaller than it is. But, uh, well, <laughs> I saw that and got to thinking about it and went, wouldn't that be fun? So, that explains this. This is a, what I think is the world's largest pellet right now. It is a 1,315 grain pellet. Let's uh, turn on the scale here. Comes in at 1,315.4 grain, or basically three ounces. <clears throat> the uh, video today was actually gonna be for my new uh, 457 shotgun rounds. Uh, we use a uh, ballistic, uh, wax it's a uh, injection wax it's very very hard and it's got a uh, the uh, shot inside it these coming at around 200 grain that one's right at it um grab another one they're all about the same 200 201 that sort of thing uh typically they stay together on impact unless they hit a bone when they hit a bone or something hard they shatter and then it's pretty much like a shotgun round but again back to this this is what we're going to do today and uh Given that this fire hydrant weighs three ounces, I wanted to make sure I had plenty of ballistic gelatin. So, there we go. Over 24 inches of ballistic gelatin. Uh, I'm going to see how far that gets in or if it gets all the way through. You saw me use this Waller uh, safe aim in the last video. Uh, I've lined up on a spot that I haven't hit before. So, I've got this uh, bulletproof uh, piece of material behind it that's uh, level three, I believe. A couple servers and two steel plates, so safety first. So anyway, I just uh, thought this might be an interesting test, see uh, what this little bullet could do. One of the things I like about this, again, this was not planned, this is not an intentional product, is the end here does not touch the rifling. So what that means is when I put this thing in and fully seat it, the rifling barely touches that first uh, ring. Uh, you see just the smallest mark at the end. Why is that important? Well, I'll tell you. On your gun, for all of you who are used to using one of the Zoo 72s, it takes a fair amount of pressure to pull that back. That's what it's designed to do. I don't know, 20, 22 pounds pressure, it doesn't take a lot to pull that back. If you're taking this and ramming around in and you're using more pressure than that to seat a large bullet, you're doing something that this lever was not designed to do. So you don't want that to happen. What you wanna do is have a bullet that fits very snugly, like it should, into the barrel. Not easy to do with one hand, by the way. And then once it is seated, then the uh, lever goes in and seats it the rest of the way. That last one eighth of an inch. That probably would have gone so much better if I had a film crew, but I do not, it's just me. So now it's completely seated, but only about one sixteenth of an inch at the very end is actually touching rifle and groove. So the lever itself is not what's driving the thing in. So anyway, what I have now is a blister gelatin, a good backstop, I'm going to try to hook this camera up here without turning it off. See what I can do there. Is it still running? Sorry, folks. Once again, not a professional. So let's run this thing over here and get a good view. There we go. That should be a pretty good view. Nothing's moving. Awesome. Let's get the rifle. It is cocked, ready to go. So, once again, let me see. I can do this without turning it off. I did not turn it off. So, 
entrance hole, very large entrance hole. You can see it going through there nice and straight. Let's pull this out of the way. Uh, broke up the end there, entered that one. And it ended up where? As I see it came out there. Ah, there we go. There is the bullet. So, it changed path. It went down low, hit the top of the table, and stopped. And there it is. So, it doesn't look quite like it did before. It's been flattened out a little bit, but I guess that's to be expected. So, that is the before and after. And one of the things I'm really happy about is, as with all of my bullets, if I can get this to focus here, you have... Really good contact with the lance and grooves. Get this far enough away where it'll focus. Because again, if air can't get around that bullet, the bullet's gonna travel faster. So you want a one-to-one -one contact with that barrel. And to do that, you need to size it 0.7283. Anyway, that's about all I got today. I hope you liked the video. We'll probably toss some of these up for sale and see if anybody's interested in them uh, for a few days only, I'm probably selling the largest pellet in the world. I'm sure somebody will come out with a 1325 next week, but for now, it's mine. Uh, if you have any questions, please let me know on the website or uh, on YouTube. I'd be happy to answer them. You have a great day. Bye-bye.